Hello and welcome to Model Kit Stuff and part two of our ICM 124 scale Model T Roadster build. So we have uh, a painted floor pan effectively which has the uh, running boards and mud, uh, mud guards um, on it. We have the engine mounted, we have the radiator mounted um, and we're now at Basically, having got to step 16 and completed that, we're at step 18, which is um, fit the exhaust, which we have painted and fitted. Now, that was the, the fit of this is fine, but it's a little bit fiddly, um, and I found it was easier to attach it to the engine block first and then put this uh, put the muffler down afterwards. So we're now just putting together some of this um, suspension work. So we're missing out step 19. We're not going to see the engine, so I'm not putting any of the fittings on the engine. Um, the engine will be completely encased, so uh, there's no point in doing stuff we're not going to see. Um, so I've just fitted these two parts here. Here and here. Um, this one you'll probably see snapped on me. Um, that was while I was trying to clean up um, the, the plastics quite um, delicate and the part was well relatively thin but any, anyway I managed to snap it I don't know whether that was an imperfection in the plastic or me just being heavy-handed um, so we're now on step 21 um, which are fitting these two large parts here let's go in there like that and then we've got this assembly at the front to put in so we're just doing that and then we can plop the wheels on and the wheels um, the blue has been painted in and we've final coated then what we've done on the uh, wheel nuts is we've picked them out in chrome um, and we've put the, the wooden spokes have had a first um, under count of um, dark red brown colour um, so we'll paint that in the same way as we did the uh, wood frame on the others so there's a little bit of clean up to do on these parts they're, they're attached to the sprue by three connecting nubs but there's also quite a heavy seam so we're dealing with the seam and the nubs at the same time so you can see quite a bit of sanding on, on these um, got a nice easy dot job so I've already test fitted the other one we didn't have an issue so I'm assuming we won't have an issue here uh, aha. except for we've got an exhaust on this side which we didn't have on the other side so connection is not very positive you've got a a mounting lug at this end and it just goes up against an indent on this side but yeah that fits okay so we put a little bit of glue on here if you were painting this um, after you've uh, glued everything together and um, you'd be better with the uh, thin glue but because I'm painting against a painted surface this thicker glue that's slower drying just dissolves the paint a bit better it's going to give me a better bond it also allows me to move things around a little bit there we go so it is making contact with the exhaust so you must make sure you, you sit this exhaust properly, otherwise it's going to interfere with the fit of that part. Um, but I am happy with that. So next we've got this assembly at the front end. So we've got an attachment point. Uh, so this is quite fragile, so you've got a point that attaches there and a point that attaches there and then got a connection point in the middle that's not touching anything so 
Let's clean these parts up first job. It's got a little bit of a nub there. Let's move that. Okay, so interestingly, if I look at this part here, um, I've got two location points. One appears to be longer than the other. Um, I can't quite make out, but I think that one is slightly thicker. It may be just it looks thicker because it's shorter. So as I look at it, the longer one is the bottom one. So we're going to put that piece in first. And it's going to go in underneath that wishbone. Which isn't quite what it shows in the instructions. And the instructions shows it above the wishbone, but that's not going to work. So a bit careful lining up. That seems to be now in place. A little fiddly, but we got there. So that completes step 21. So I don't want to assemble the wheels until I've pointed, put some more paint on them, uh, so we'll get to that in a minute. Right, I'm just coming to this step here, uh, where we're fitting the dashboard. I'm just test fitting it at this stage, and what I've found is we have a problem. The engine block is in the way of the... Um, bulkhead by what's that five four millimeters maybe let's see about three and a half millimeters um, it's not even close to fitting so the hinge part itself at the top fits both parts as it should do um, and then this part here is fouling on there now what's my solution Don't want to take dashboard out because that'll be seen from the front end. So it's actually making contact with the exhaust and the corner of the engine. And that can't be in the wrong place because of this mounting point for the sump. That is interesting. Might be able to to take out a little bit of material from the dashboard to get that to sit on one side but we can't do that on the other side yeah that's annoying I think my solution is to chop the engine right well I've looked at this um, from all angles as far as I can see there's no alternative here um, it's just never gonna fit without modifying 
something and I don't want it to be the dashboard so we're going to modify the engine because ultimately that's going to be closed up and not seen so um, to get this to fit we need to take a bit off this engine block so that's the plan <laughs> Quite a bit more. All of that vibration is not good for this. Okay, so I think we have um, bridged the gap, so to speak. Um, but it's required a bit of buttery to the engine block there um, I couldn't see any other way around it if I'm honest um, so I'm going to tidy this up a little bit um, and then we can paint that we'll take advantage of this being disassembled again to paint these because we'll paint them black as well um, and then we can reassemble all of this so yeah that's worth knowing that that doesn't remotely fit okay I'm going to do some tidy up and some paint and we'll put some paint on the second coat of paint on the wheels um, and I will get back to you when that is done Right then, um, my wheels are painted up. Um, obviously the paint that I've used uh, for the wood effect is a, is a matte paint, so, um, and I want this all high gloss. So I'm using um, Vallejo's uh, acrylic gloss, which is my favorite gloss um, for brushing at any rate. It's really nice, um, uh, hard drying, easy to use. You can thin it with, with water. Um, the only thing you have to be careful of is if you put too much on it can dry a little bit milky um, but it doesn't yellow um, with light as some varnishes can so um, it's a really nice product I think um, when you when you put it on it can look a little bit milky but don't worry about that um, it will dry clear as long as you put it on nice and thin. I've never tried it in an airbrush so I've got to be honest. Varnish is now dried on these um, wheels um, and I'm just removing them from the sprues and trimming them up a little bit, cleaning them up a little bit I should say. Um, now, I do want to paint these ideally, um, but um, I, I need to use some Holford's primer on them, which I can't do the weather being the way it is at the minute. So I tend to use my uh, Holford's primer while I'm uh, outside, um, which isn't something I can do at the minute. So for now, I'm just going to pop these tyres on. Um, and we can always take them off again when we when we need to. Um, so there's a very very slight tread on these, but it is very slight. And we've got um, a moulding lip on one side all the way around, so it's not in the middle like. It often is, it's on one side. So that just needs a little bit of work. It's 
just coming up easy enough then. So I do want to show you what that looks like. And then well, that goes on very easy. Not really a tight fit at all that. Actually, looks quite nice in the white actually. So, pops on there like that. So, we have wheels, and all four of them touch the ground, so that's really good. Actually, I really quite like the white tyres. Now I see them on, it might be staying like that. We'll have to see. We'll have to see. Need to think about. So I've decided to build up um, any remaining sub assemblies, um, and then we can prime all the parts, paint all the parts, um, and then just pull this together. Um, so I'm starting here with the seats. The seats go together very nice indeed. So I'm just finishing sanding these down. Then we'll glue them together they can be put aside to be painted now the instructions say paint these black but i'm not sure that i want to do that um, i'm possibly going to go with a uh, white seats maybe which i think could look quite uh, quite classy you can see they go together quite nicely so um yeah, if I do them white, I then need to think about what accent colour I'm using on the texture at the back, for example. You know, are we going for a bit of yellow or a, a very light brown? Or need to think about that. Or maybe a very, very pale grey would work. Um, the other colour I was entertaining was maybe like a burgundy colour, but I'm not sure that would go with the blue. I think white could look quite cool. The lady that's going to be sat in there, and she's going to have a sort of a lemon yellow dress, so um, that could set that off quite nicely as well. So, yeah, we could possibly be going white on the seats. So I'm just going to test fit these seats because with some things being painted, the fit can be a little tight, but that looks good. They're not actually quite straight, they sort of face inwards a little bit, but wow, look how offset those pedals are. <laughs> but that was fun to drive. Okay. They fit okay then, no issues there. So there's two steering columns uh, provided in the kit parts. It's the shorter one with this little support arm here that we use on the Roadster. So I'm just building this up. There's four parts to go together on this. Um, it's a little fiddly. And this is the, the two larger bits. I think I can see how that works. Well, that's the steering column assembly done. Uh, yeah, I'm getting close to saying I've had enough of this. Uh, I'm just not enjoying it. Um, that is the whole point of a hobby, to enjoy it. And if you don't, life's too short to do something you're not enjoying, that is for sure. Anyway, I will carry on with the sub assemblies for now and then we will park it for a week or two. I might get my mojo back. So, two headlamps. I am going to try. I don't know if anybody saw Nigel's tip on making a bulb. Um, I'm going to try and do that. I 
think that would look rather cool. So we need 12 and 20 together. So that's 12. 20 is the one that I think was loose, but I'd broken off the sprue. So let's just try them together. Again, these have location pins that this time don't get in the way. Quite a bit of clean up needed on those as well. And these are the ones that fit into these little brackets here. Just fit that. Well, that goes in actually quite nicely. Yeah, fit of that is good. And we've got crank handle for the engine. So the instructions only give you a colour for the wooden handle on this, not for the whole shaft. So uh, I guess you just make that up as you like. But I think I'll probably go with black on the handle. With a, on the shaft of the handle, I should say. I'm just doing the steering wheel now. Um, and it takes quite a bit of time to clean up. It's a very delicate part, well, two parts. Um, this is the um, rim, and then we've got the centre there. Um, so there was four connection points on the outside and four connection points on the inside. Uh, obviously it's a little bit difficult to get in and clean up the inside, so we had to carve away with a knife very carefully. Um, but it's come up alright that actually. So we've now got to clean this up, so I'm going to just take the seams off bits I can do while it's still on the sprue and the part's more rigid. That looks good. Clean up. So we've only got the connection points to clean up then. Okay, let's take them off. to clean up. That's one. Four. Okay, so this then has four location slots on the underside of the rim. So in theory, if we can line up two, we've lined up all of them. There we go. Just hold one of those in place. So 
to close it moves just making sure that's in properly that's the steering wheel done okay and this is the spare wheel which is supposed to rest against this somehow and this is going to be interesting I think this is when you look at the instructions you've got these four Four bolts there. When you look at the instructions, they are supposed to fit under there like that. And you've got a lamp in the middle, so I think we'll fit the lamp first. So that's my spare wheel, basically. I'll just get the nubs off so that tire can go on. Okay, just check the tire fits. Yep. So while we're at it, we might as well clean the tire up. Yeah, no fit issues there. That fits okay. Okay, my next conundrum is these little lamps. So it's telling me that I need to paint this F, which is bright brass. And then it's telling me to paint discs J and K in clear red and clear blue. The problem I've got is there isn't actually any discs on the parts. These parts glue into there. So I need to paint the inside of that before I glue that in place. And then I need to think about what I'm going to do, so probably need to cut some little masking discs and um, then we need to think about how we're going to paint those. I've got clear red, I don't think I've got clear blue. So we might just have to do a very thin, um, thin down blue to do a clear blue. Okay, so for now we won't bother with the glass, but we do, there's a lot of heavy seam on this, so we do need to clean that up. So, I've got some seam to clean on this as well while we're at it. So I think what we're going to do is we'll paint the inside of the clear parts on these lamps um, with the clear colour that's requested. So we can do a clear red easy enough. Um, and then we can do um, like a thin down blue to, to make a, a clear blue. Uh, that's for the rear line and then 
the others, that's for just one of them, and then the other two have brass sides um, and a clear square front, so that's that's easier to do. Now then, we'll try doing Nigel's little light bulb trick. So if you didn't see his video, it was quite interesting. Quite a good little idea that. Unfortunately, there's a lot of quite heavy seam on this and um, it's uh, got a lot of shape to it so it's very difficult to clean up. So I think uh, we're making good progress, lots of clean up to do. Um, I think we'll call it um, a day for this video. Um, in the next video, um, we will probably complete the car build um, uh, in its entirety. Um, and then we'll have a look at the two figures um, that need to go in there. So thanks for looking in. Um, stay safe, everyone, and I hope we'll see you soon.